We're going to discuss two different topics in this video. They're related to each other, but they cover different concepts. What we'll be looking at are populations, how they're distributed, and their population density. Uh, for starters, we have to talk a little bit about density and, and just discussing what this means. Density is really talking about how many individuals there are in a given amount of area. So something that's a high density would be something like a herd of elephants. You've got a lot of animals in a relatively small area, you know, because they're going to move together. And there's advantages and disadvantages that go along with this, which we'll talk about. Uh, something that has low density would be something like a hawk. You know, a hawk doesn't really travel in groups. They don't travel in, like, flocks like other birds. They're sort of solitary animals. They're often by themselves, and there's usually very few hawks in the surrounding area. So they have what we would consider to be a low population density. Each one of these has specific advantages and disadvantages, which we'll kind of go through and break down here in a second. But to start off, I'll just look at high density first. So think about some advantages that this might have. So if you've got a lot of individuals in a population, one of the things that certainly comes along as an advantage is some protection. You think about the elephant populations. You know, they're protected because they're together in this large herd. It helps keep predators away. There are other animals that use this strategy, like fish, that school together. Part of the reason for the schooling is for protection. You know, they're together in a large group, so that way they're protected from predators. Another advantage to this is that it's easy for individuals in the population to find mates. Since they're always traveling together in a group, it's not like they have to go out and seek out other individuals of the same species. Now, the problem is there are some disadvantages that go along with this. The number one disadvantage is disease. Uh, when you get a lot of individuals in the same population, like in the same area, at the same time, it's easy for disease to spread. Uh, especially because all of these animals are going to be dropping their waste in the same area. It's easy for them to get sick. Uh, things like elephants can pollute watering holes and areas where they stop in order to get resources because there's just so many of them there at the same time. Uh, and then speaking of resources, that becomes another disadvantage, actually. Um, it's easy for a group... Um, got to work on my ability to spell and speak at the same time. Uh, it's easy for a group to end up uh, going through and using up all the resources in a given area. So you think of elephants, like animals that require a lot of food, a lot of water. Part of the reason they always have to keep moving is because they'll go through and they'll like, decimate the resources in an area. They'll basically eat and drink everything and then move on to the next spot. So one of the issues with a high-density population is that they tend to do that. It doesn't just have to be elephants. A lot of different high-density things do this. Uh, one of the most common are locusts. I mean, locusts are extremely high-density species, and you end up with them going through and just decimating all of the food sources in a given area. Um, an example, then, of, of low density. We talked about uh, the concept of our hawk here. One of the advantages to a low density situation is resources. It's basically going to be the opposite of what we were seeing above with, with some slight uh, changes here. But the advantages are resources. There's more resources for the individuals. Since there's overall there's less competition. So they're competing less with other individuals from the same species. So you think about that hawk. You know, what does the hawk eat? Well, it might eat, you know, mice or other small rodents. And if it's the only hawk in the area, there's more resources for it to use, and it's competing less with other hawks to get those resources. The disadvantages are basically going to be the opposite of the advantages from the high-density group. There is no protection now. That hawk is totally in charge of... You know, policing its own area of, of providing its own protection. There is no group protection that's available to that hawk. The other issue is one of the things that was an advantage in our high-density population is finding mates. This is going to be more challenging now since the hawk will need to expend more energy and like travel to other areas beyond just its territory in order to find a suitable mate. 
So one easy way of thinking about these things is they basically have the opposite advantages and disadvantages. Everything that's helpful in a high-density population is going to be something that's difficult to achieve in a low-density population, and then vice versa with that with the disadvantages. So really, if you just learn uh, one of them and then remember that the other group is the opposite, it's kind of an easy strategy of going through and, and thinking about these things. The next thing we'll talk about are some ways that these populations are distributed, because it's not always going to be the same. Uh, when it comes to population distributions, there's three different setups or models that we typically see for this. And uh, their names kind of give away the distribution. This is a, a decent one to start off with. We have a random population distribution here. So we've got a picture that shows it, as well as sort of like a little graphic from your textbook. And uh, these are all examples, by the way, that are from your book. But what we're looking at here are like the little purple flowers that are growing. And you can see how they're randomly distributed throughout this field. And if you look at the, the graph up here, or the figure that kind of represents that, you can see there is no pattern. There's nothing to really discern where these are going to be popping up. And if you think about how these flowers spread, they're probably like windblown seeds. So those seeds just blow out throughout the field, wherever they land, is where that particular plant ends up growing. So sometimes population distribution is as simple as it just being random. There really is no pattern to it, and there's no advantage for them having a pattern or any type of uh, organization to their distribution. The next type is a little bit different. We call this one a clump distribution. I mentioned schooling fish to you earlier. This would be a good example of a clumped distribution. So fish end up schooling together in a group. They get some of those advantages that we talked about of having a higher population density. What this ends up looking like in our figure is a bunch of little clusters. So there are different groups of individuals clumped in different areas. If you think of animals that tend to move together as a group, they would apply to this kind of a distribution. So if you think of birds even that fly together in flocks, that would be a clump distribution because you're finding a bunch of them in the same area at the same time. And then our last one that we'll look at, this is a uniform distribution. This one's kind of rare in nature, but we've got a good example of one here. If you look at these penguins, they all kind of keep their own little personal space. And you can see how they're basically set up in rows, and there's the same amount of space, roughly, in between all of these penguins. So we consider this to be a uniform distribution. So if we look at our figure up here, we've got roughly the same amount of space in between all of these individuals. This is usually going to take place if individuals need resource space or they need some of the area around them. Uh, for example, if you took a plot of a lot of the big mature trees in a forest, you would get a roughly uniform distribution because the trees will shade out other species around them and they'll end up being distributed in a pattern that's not exactly uniform. Like you can't say, oh, well, you know, this next tree will be exactly 10 feet away from the tree next to it. But it does give you a pretty good pattern of distribution for something like that. Uh, uniform is definitely the most rare of the three of these, but it is certainly something that we're seeing out there in nature. So something to keep in mind is that not all populations are distributed the same way. And I think something that will help you when it comes to remembering these are the names. If you know what the name means, like why we call it uniform distribution, well, uniform because it's all the same, uh, that should help you remember the distribution itself. So we've got uniform, clumped, where they're together in groups, and then random, where there just is no pattern to the distribution. So for this video, just make sure you remember differences between high-density and low-density populations. Keep in mind that the advantages and disadvantages kind of flip-flop between those two. And then if you know the key names for the different population distributions, you should be set for that one as well. So thank you for watching, and please check out the next video.